Hi everybody, my name is Jay Johnson. Um, I'm here in a cornfield in Vermilion County. Uh, today is the 18th of October. Well, it's not really the 18th of October, but you're seeing this message on the 18th of October. Uh, and I'm a pastor in Royal. We're sitting in the cornfield because everybody knows now we're in the season of uh, harvest. And uh, we got, um, we got ears like this. We got ears like this. They're not bad. You know, we got, and that's why the farmers are gonna be out in these days, uh, making sure they bring the harvest. Um, Matthew uh, 9, 37 and 38 talk about how we need to uh, be in the fields because the fields are ripe, the ripe unto harvest, but there's very few workers. I came to uh, the church in Royal uh, in June of 2009. And probably one of the first messages I had, probably within the first couple of months, I said, um, I asked people, I said, you know what a nubbin is? A nubbin. Well, right here in front of me, I got this plant, this corn plant. You see this here? You see this here? That's a nubbin. You see what's on that ear? I didn't, I didn't put this here. This ear, you see that? That means they put one kernel in the ground to grow this plant, and this is all they got. You know what that is? That's a nub. We're put in the ground to produce fruit, to produce other plants, to produce more. And some people, like this plant, they don't share the gospel. If you don't share the gospel, guess what happens? Nothing. This little nubbin here, he spent his whole life, and his net gain was nothing. Now, our churches right now in our country, uh, they're dying. They're not growing. People need to talk. People need to, they need to take it from here, in here, in here, in here, put it here so that people can hear what they're saying. Now I know people are going to say, well, you can see what I do by my works. No, uh, that's okay. But the importance is, if you don't say it with your lips, well, it says in Romans chapter 10, what are we called to do? We're called to go out and share the gospel with those that do not know it. There's a lot of people that don't know. Anyway, this little message here is, is uh, it's just a start to the sermon today. The message is going to be about Hannah. Hannah was in the Old Testament, and she had a concern about herself, but she wanted to make sure that the faith that she had would go out and be increased. It's one of those narratives. So I'd like you to watch what Hannah has to do, what she has to say, and how that results with her son, Samuel. Samuel was one of the last of the, uh, last of the judges and the first of the prophets. Keep in mind what Samuel does because of Samuel's commitment. And listen carefully to one of the verses that I'm going to speak about at the end of the message. It's really important because Samuel has a, Samuel's reputation is that he will speak and people will hear. If they don't, if they don't want to listen, that's okay because that's that's on their hands. But Samuel knows that he's responsible. He says a very key phrase about the importance of personal prayer on behalf of others. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, blessings to you and um, stay safe this harvest. Uh, keep tucked in when it's cold and make sure you open your mouth when when you need to tell others. Blessings to you. Bye now. Good morning, everybody. It's the 18th of October, and here we are in the sanctuary of the uh, Royal Church. Uh, my name is Jay Johnson, and we're here today to have another service of worship to the Lord. And I just want to make this introductory comment. We're going to be speaking about Hannah. Hannah in the Old Testament. It's a simple story about a woman that wanted to witness to her faith. And she plays a tiny part in the chain of events 
that lead up to the person that, that is the savior of the world. And she has a very small part of that, but she was glad to play it. And I'd like us to be thinking about what Hannah has done as we go through this service, but as Hannah knew that she confessed before her, her Lord, we too have an opportunity to confess as we begin this service. So please uh, uh, feel free while this, this time of confession is going on, please feel free to offer up those confessions from your own heart. Let's begin. We begin this service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please take the time right now to offer those, offer those petition, uh, petitions up to your heaven. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. For those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows upon them his Holy Spirit. We're, not, we're now going to have uh, several scripture readings from the book of 1 Samuel. Jackie? In the time of the judges, a certain woman of faith from the tribe of Ephraim was barren, unable to have a child. Yet she desperately desired to have a son deeply loved by her husband of Canaan. Hannah went to Shiloh, to the tabernacle, to inquire of the Lord for a son. The reading is from 1 Samuel. From 1 Samuel chapter 1. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made a vow, saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery, and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son. Then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. Early the next morning, they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah lay with Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought them to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When they had slaughtered the bull, they brought the boy to Eli, the priest. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. And she worshipped the Lord there. Then following in 1 Samuel 2. Then Hannah prayed and said, 
My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord, my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pines away. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honour. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. Upon them he has set his word. Then continuing in chapter 2, verse 19. Each year Hannah made her son a little robe and took it to him when, he, when she went up with her husband to offer the annual sacrifice to, at the tabernacle. Eli, the priest, would bless Elkanah and his wife, saying, May the Lord give you children by this woman and to take the place of the one who was, that she prayed for and gave to the Lord. Then they would go home. And the Lord was gracious to Hannah. She conceived and gave birth to three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. And the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with men. Continuing in chapter 3 of 1 Samuel. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. And lastly, this is several chapters later in chapter 12. This is what Samuel said as he was praying for his people who were in great distress. Samuel said these words, As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. And I will teach you the way. Let's do it at night. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Jackie, for, for assisting me on that. Heavenly Father, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable to you so that we might better, better understand what it means to be completely devoted to what you have for us. Although unseen, it is yet knowable to you and eventually to us. Amen. Hannah was a young woman that was married to the man that she loved. And she wanted a child. She wanted to be a mother. Hannah lived in the time of the Judges. The Judges was the period just before the book of Ruth and uh, immediately just before the time of first, the book of First Samuel. This was in a time when there was no king in Israel. This is what it says in the very last, the last verse of the book uh, of Judges. Judges chapter 21, verse 25. This is what it says. In those days, Israel had no king. Everybody did what was right in his own eyes. That's how the book ended. They did what they saw was fit. In this first chapter of 1 Samuel, we can see that God's plan was unfolding in the preparation of his plan for the development of his kingdom through the life and the faith of this woman, Hannah. Major events take place in every place we go, but they're always initiated by small details and small events. Hannah, who was barren, was demeaned by others because of it. They made fun of her because she didn't have a child. She desperately wanted a child, but she didn't have one. And as a woman of God, given a prayer, she trusted the Lord would hear her reply and answer her request. And she made this vow that Jackie has read. She said, when this child is born, I will gladly and willingly give him up to the Lord so that he may serve the Lord forever. She promised to do that for her son, to be given for the Lord's service. 
She asked to be, the phrase was, she said, remember me. I would, I would, I would say that God has a long, 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 long memory. You see, he remember, you, do you remember what we've been talking about for the last six weeks? We talked about how a promise was made to Abraham, way, uh, a promise was made to Adam way in the beginning, then to Abraham and through the years, and people remembered it. My guess is that this young Jewish woman, knowing the scriptures well, I don't think she understood that she would be a part of this grand scheme where there would be this man of God that would be, would be raised up. But she knew it was in her heart, and she knew that she would offer her prayers and praises to God. Well, God remembered Hannah and saw her as part of his upcoming plan for the coming of his son long after. Verse 19 says, the Lord remembered, and I believe he was happy to include Hannah in this, in this venture. I believe as God knows, he sees things from far above. He knows all the details. He knows the beginning. He knows the trail, and he knows the ending. He knew the beginning. He saw Hannah in the middle. He prepared her, used her for his glory and her honor. Just as he is happy to include you and I in his plan so that we may be part of the kingdom. This young girl, unknown 3,000 years ago, it's interesting that we talk about her today. And they've talked about her for thousands of years because of her faithfulness. She gave birth, she raised this little boy, this boy Samuel, until it was time for her to give him up. To be given so that she could give to give back to God the promise that she had made. She gave him back to God. Not too many weeks ago, we talked about Abram. Abram had a child, Isaac. Abram was asked to sacrifice his child. What a terrible call that was. But Abram knew that he had to be willing to give up his only son so that he would prove his love for the Almighty God. God himself did that when he gave his son Jesus for us. He gave his son up. In this passage, this young woman, she was more than ready, more than willing, uh, and capable of giving her son Samuel back to the service of God. The good thing was she could go and visit him every year. He was a very small, uh, small young boy. When he was weaned, we're not sure, probably maybe two, three years of age, maybe a little older. That's what, that was a custom for me people back then. But the times were unsure. Her society was touch and go. And things were very unstable politically. But she trusted that God would be there. You see, her decision was, was to commit her son to the Lord. It was her prayer. It was her vow. And it were her actions that all aimed towards that. There's another Jewish man that I thought of as I was going through this. And there's a, because as I say, she was, she felt it was, she was called upon to, to offer her service in the eyes of God. You ever heard of a man called Albert Einstein? Einstein was uh, arguably maybe the smartest man that lived, walked the earth in the last hundred years. The guy was really brilliant. But they asked Mr. Einstein later in life, um, what was his purpose? Can you imagine asking Albert Einstein what your purpose is? Now keep in mind, you know what his heritage was. He was a Jewish man, raised in Germany. I believe that he was probably trained and taught and prepared by those of his parents who were obviously Jewish. And this is what Albert Einstein said when he was asked, what is his purpose in life? He said, as far, aside from the, the religious, my purpose in life is to serve. Arguably, he had the highest IQ ever, but he saw his role as that of service. I believe that's the role that each one of us have. Whatever it is we do, in small things or big things, we're called upon to serve God. Verse 28, Hannah was this godly woman who worshiped the Lord. Verse 8 says, the Lord, this is her, this is her prayer, this is her call, this is her, this is her adoration of God. Once that she had received this, she responded with a prayer, with a, actually a song that she says right now. 
I think this is exemplary for us as well, that when we have been blessed with some benefit that God has given, we need to acknowledge God, and we can do it in the sight of others. This is what she said. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and exalts. He raises the poor from the dust, and he lifts up the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's, and upon them he has set the world. Now, I don't know if Hannah had some premonition that she would be the one that was raised from the ash heap, and that he would that that individual would be set with the princes and would inherit a throne, excuse me, a throne of honor. We still honor Hannah, but we honor her and we respect her as an older sister for giving the righteous work that we see. And now as Hannah steps off the stage, her Samuel, her son Samuel, her oldest son, her most beloved son, began to increase in his faith. Verse 21, it says, And the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. It's an interesting phrase there because in, previous, in the previous chapters, it says that God was nowhere present and had not been heard of for a long time. So here it says, And the boy grew up in the presence of the Lord. So as he was there in this sacred place, it was by the tabernacle, he began to hear these things and hear these teachings. Uh, verse 26 says, Verse 26 says, and the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with man. These are the exact same words that were used to describe, to describe Jesus as a 12-year-old boy in, in, when he was in Jerusalem and went back to Nazareth. These are the same words. Then he grew in faith, he grew in favor with the Lord and in favor with man. He grew spiritually and he grew, and he grew socially. This is a passage that really has, has uh, captured my attention years ago. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 19 and tw through 21. Three verses, what it says. It said, when Samuel was presented with these truths, he said, he let none of, none of God's word fall to the ground, which meant everything that was given and delivered into his care, not only to his hands, but into his mind, he hung on to it. He sucked it. He just he, it just stuck to him because it was it was like life. It was life. The word of God was life to him, and he just he just absorbed it like a sponge. That's verse nineteen. Then verse twenty. This this really just sort of explodes and goes out even further. It says, and all of Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. What that means is, as he was in Shiloh, which was in the middle of the country, it says, and all of Israel from Dan, which is way in the north, it's as far as north as you can go, and way in the south was the area called Beersheba. And from Dan, all the people up there, to all the people down in Beersheba, they were aware of who this boy was. Although he was not such a young boy now, he was growing in wisdom and in stature like Jesus, and they recognized him as a prophet of the Lord. And the last verse in that section, verse 21 says, this is powerful for, for Samuel, but listen carefully because I believe this is for us too. And the Lord continued to appear and he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. Samuel spent his time and his days devoted to this. He also had his tasks. But you know, brothers and sisters, we have this. We have this at our disposal any day of the week, 24 hours a day. We can read this, we can read this text. It can become ours as we incorporate these words into our lives. It is crucial that we, you and I, all, all of us would be attentive to the word. We are truly grateful for the people that come into our lives and teach us and tell us and train us and say those things that are needful. This is the last part I'd like to mention. This is the last verse that I read. This is from 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. 
It says this, when, when Samuel was older and the nation was having difficulty, Samuel, they, and they entreated him, they begged him, they, they pleaded with him to please pray for them because they knew that he and God, he had this distinctly uh, close relationship with God. And this is what Samuel said. Samuel said, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against God by failing to pray for you. And I will teach you the way that is good and right. Such is the caliber of the man who later he anointed David, who was the king. And David, we know, was the ancestor of Jesus Christ. Talk about an important role that Samuel had. He became the model by which David and, and all of his all of his countrymen looked. Um, I'm going to ask my wife to come up now and sing a song. I'd like you to uh, be aware that um, this song, as, she, as you pay clo close attention, this might be well something that Hannah herself may have sung. That Hannah may have sung and that it references really how we are all children and how we really do seek God's grace upon us. Um, and we know that as our lives go on, sometimes for us that, that light dims a bit, that grace dims a bit. But this is a prayer in a song as we reflect on it. Um, yeah, just to bring us to that place of recommitting our lives to the Lord and being in his service. Oh Lord, you're beautiful, your face is all I seek, for when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. Oh Lord, please light the fire that once burned bright and clear. Restore that burned with holy fear. I want to take your word and shine it all around, but first help me just to live it, Lord. And when I'm doing Help me to never seek a crown, for my reward is giving glory to you. Oh Lord, your As we think of those words, there are many times each of us, all of us, we want to offer praises and thanks to our Heavenly Father. Well, as we go through these petitions, uh, two comments. We are in a season of harvest. We're harvesting the crops from the land and we're grateful that we have a chance to be here in the royal, to be surrounded by this, this plentiful fields of grain which we know that will feed people. 
But there's also something else that we have to have and we do have to feed people. We've got Sunday school teachers. And today is a national day of appreciation for Sunday school teachers. And I know that all of us at some time have been in those in those rooms and hanging between that where they sometimes they simply had a space that was divided by curtains hanging there on wires and we were told these amazing stories by Moses and the prophets. And that was the initiation for us. That's when the seeds were planted for us. And they were planted and now they grow. So we're going to be offering thanks for the Sunday school teachers. And as you see one today, go up and tell them how grateful you are. Let's begin. God of creation, as we see the harvest of the fields, allow the greatness of your plan to be registered in our minds and hearts. The earth offers food to us to sustain our lives. That food comes from you, from your good hand to strengthen our bodies. Our souls, our spirits are nourished by your closeness. Thank you for loving us and for your provision in all things, in all ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. <coughs> Spirit of the living God, you hovered above the earth at creation. You hover, walk, and live among us now, even as we speak. You minister to us. Your guardian angels are among us right now, protecting us. You live within us, and you show us convince us once again that we are loved with an everlasting love that cannot fail that will sustain us and your love will fill us your love filled the life of your servant Hannah you completed her you drew her to yourself and because of her faithfulness we have been rewarded by the ministry and the leadership of her son Samuel we respond in praise to you we are truly grateful Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus, each generation is called upon to trust in you. We now step to the task before us. Draw us near to yourself. Enlighten us with your words. Your obedience to the Father at all times is your model of the godly life. Help us to remember and to copy your actions your very words. Watch over the leaders of our church. Be with Dan Selbo, our bishop, all his staff. Enlighten with truth our pastors, council members, committee members, our Sunday school teachers, especially on this day of appreciation, and every student with a clearer vision of what you've called each of them to. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. <coughs> healer of the broken and the one who restores the time that has been lost we eagerly turn our hearts and our lives to you purge the poison from our thoughts and allow our lips to be instruments of healing and comfort in this in increasing time of a, this virus this COVID condition that swarms around us here and increases worldwide we ask that you would please men help and and attend to those who are going through this. Father, I ask that you would please, please be with the family of my cousin Debbie Miller, who has passed from life. Minister to her. Minister to those who mourn her loss. We ask that you would fill the emptiness that, and with your calm and the fullness of what it means to stand with you and by you. We ask that you would minister though to many of those who are weakened by this pandemic and that disrupts our communities. We especially ask that you would please be with Ronald Watson uh, as he is in his health is grave. Please minister to him. Strengthen our, our friends, our neighbors, our Rademacher, uh, Gepka Sage, our brother Dick Duval, Nick Christians, our friend and brother Lee, Leanne, and uh, Dennis Maher, Cheryl Holes, Annette Frerix, Dorothy Albers, Allie Kramer, continue to be with Claire Huddled and Lee McDowell. Minister, minister to and watch over uh, Linda Pomeroy. 
We ask that you would please minister to all of our kinsmen, and all of our neighbors and friends in the nursing home, being keenly aware that though they cannot get out, their hearts are offering continually prayers and praises unto you. For this we are grateful. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father of all, sovereign of all time, you know the future. Our lives, our times, and our well-being is in your hand. We commend our nation's leadership into your keeping. We confess our weakness and frail abilities as Daniel confessed the sins of his people, we confess that as a nation, we have failed to follow you and have chased after plans that have sapped our strength and divided our allegiance to you. Please forgive us. In these days, be with our president, our Congress and our representatives. Instruct us so that they may lead us in a closer walk in obedience, even as we prepare to be voting. Lord, guide us, and in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, <coughs> you alone can enter our hearts, protect our thoughts and our intentions, close our eyes to sin, May our eyes be open to see your vision for each of us. As the twelve, eager to grow, saw each day with eagerness as they were with you, allow us to likewise savor this day, this very day today, as an opportunity to serve you. As they asked Jesus how they might pray, we join in the words of his words that he spoke to them by saying, Our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jackie. Appreciate your help. Just a few announcements. Uh, as, as we mentioned earlier, today is the National Sunday School uh, Appreciation Day. You know a Sunday school teacher? If they're no longer around, offer thanks and prayers uh, on their behalf. Uh, next Sunday will be Reformation Sunday, uh, the last Sunday in October. We celebrate the Reformation, which was 503 years ago. We're going to be having that, uh, we may be having that service inside. Uh, I'd just like to remind everybody, if we have it inside, um, we're going to be having some readings. We're going to be having some singing. Uh, I'm going to encourage everyone, please make sure that you, that you, wear, that you wear your masks. Uh, it's really important because we're going to be, we're going to be having some interaction and uh, we're really suggesting that, uh, asking that everybody would please wear your mask. Uh, in two weeks, we're going to be having uh, our service. It's the first service in the month of November. We're going to be having two services, as many of you know. Uh, at the last council meeting, we talked about having two services to accommodate more people as they're coming inside. So those services will be at 8 a.m. I know that's a bit early, but that's also the day we're going to have a time change. So that's going to back people up even more. But hey... I'll be here. I'll be eager to be here with all you guys. That, that'd, be, that'd be fine. So the first Sunday, the first service is at 8. Sunday school for the adults is going to be at 9, also for confirmation with the kids. And the second service will be at 1015. Okay, that'll be the first Sunday in November. So please make plans to attend them at those times. Now I'd like to give this benediction. And for those of you that's, that, are, that remember the first part of this message that I gave, I was out in the cornfield, remember? I was out in the cornfield in Vermilion, Vermilion County. I said I was going to focus on one verse at the end, and this is it. It's actually a verse that I've already read. I read it to you before. I spoke about it distinctly. But these, this is really key because I really believe that this passage is a guidance for all of us. This is what Samuel said, and I'm going to read this as a benediction. 
that Samuel, were he to be here today, if he were to say this, well, he actually is through the word, divinely inspired, obviously. This is what it says when he was called upon to pray. He was called upon to pray for people that were desperate for affirmation and deliverance and instruction. Samuel said in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23, As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against God by failing to pray for you. And I will teach you what is good and what is right. And so our Heavenly Father desires that for each one of you. Thank you very much for coming today. Blessings to you. Take care. And we'll see you, see you next week. Bye now.